Now we're going to set up the actual controller. Here we're going to click on Datamite USB options and the prototype dyno controller. We also have an auxiliary controller. This would be something like a, a throttle control if you wanted. But the dyno control is what most of our customers are most interested in. So you click on that, and here is the dyno controller settings. And you can see here, the first thing you want to do is if we change it to no, everything is disabled. We don't have a controller. So we want to make sure we say, yes, we have a controller. And you want to know what COM port it's connected to. So here we're going to do... Uh, Click on find to see how many, what COM ports are available. So I'm going to go click on find and it's going to check to see where the COM port is for the controller. And you can see here it found uh, three COM ports on this computer. One we know is a built in COM port, that's not a USB port. You can see eight is the Datamite COM port, so six is must be the, um, the controller COM port. So we're going to say it's set to six, we're going to say okay, that makes sense. And the next thing is what type of controller do you have? We have three types of controllers. Um, eddy current with RPM feedback, water break with RPM feedback. This is not well developed yet, so do not use this. I mean, um, the controller can go into oscillation and stuff. But water break with position feedback, where it just opens and closes the valve at a very steady rate, that works fairly well right now. So that's what we're uh, setting this to. Water break with position feedback. Position meaning what position is the valve at. So anyway, you've selected, once you select the type, then you're gonna go up here and say, okay, load in the defaults. You don't know really what all these settings should be. So let the program fill them in. But the, whatever you fill in here is based on this type. So set the type first, then go to defaults. And then it says, do you wanna do this for typical water break position feedback type of controller, you're gonna say yes. And you can see it's checking the firmware because what firmware version in your controllers will have some bearing on what it sets here. So now it has set the, uh, these defaults. And um, Now once these defaults have been set, we've got to send all these settings over to the controller. And that is done by this tune button here. So you set your defaults and then you click on tune. It says make sure that the engine is off and all this other stuff. Make sure your hands are clear so if the controller does something unexpected, nothing bad will happen. So are these conditions true? Yes, it's just a little safety warning. So we say, and you're going to see up here, it's stepping through. A whole bunch of steps sending information in 25 steps over to the controller. Now you can see after it gets to the first 10, it gets a little faster. And because we're doing position feedback, okay, it's saying here control has set been back set back to the knob. And now it's going to ask, do you have control of the actuator with the knob? You can see now it's asking, do you have control with the knob? Sometimes it takes a while for a control to be released back um, during this process. And I don't know if you can hear it there, but I'm moving the control knob. You can see here the controller moving back and forth, the actuator. So I do have control. If you don't have control right away, like it says, wait here. I've seen it sometimes take up to 60 seconds or more, a minute or more. But the control will come back. If you wait a really long time, just click on no and it will go through this process again. So I have control, I'm gonna click on yes, I have control with the knob. Okay, move the actuator to the middle of the stroke. Okay, so there we go. I've moved the actuator to the middle of the stroke and I'm gonna click okay. Like it says, keep hands clear. Now what it's doing is asking me, do you know what the lower limit is for the travel of this actuator based on a number? And the only way you'd know this is if Performance Trends sent you a number or you've done this before. If you don't know, and I'm going to say we don't know, I'm going to say no, and then we're going to position the actuator at a limit using the knob. We're going to position it at the lowest limit that it can go. If you go the wrong way, it'll tell you you went the wrong way. But this is so that you don't 
hit mechanical stops and have the actuator bumping up a mechanical stop all the time and you know it eventually might burn out the actuator so I'm gonna say no and then I'm gonna position it so here we go no I don't know a number and now it'll say move the actuator to a low number okay there I position it at a low number I'm gonna click on okay 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 it's telling me I went the wrong direction okay so do you want to move the action to the other end of its stroke and try again yes I do so we're going to go to the other end okay click OK when I position it at the other end of its travel okay and there's the number the lower limit is set to you might want to write this down 1586 in the future if you want to duplicate what you're doing you can just type in 1586 you don't have to go through all this again okay I've written that down and now it's a move the actuator to the other end of the range okay I move it to the other end of the range I'm going to click OK and that is 3615 I wrote that down okay so now we've established the total range of the actuator. It could have gone as low as zero for a number, and it could have gone as high as 4,095. So this is within that limit. It doesn't have quite as much range mechanically as what the actuator is capable of. So we're going to click OK. And now it's asking, this is critical, did this motion or the current actuator position, would this increase load on the motor? And because of the way this dyno is, it is, yes, it opened the valve, and that's going to supply more water, and that would put more load on the motor. For some other types of dynos, that is not true. It's the opposite. Opening the valve actually re reduces the load on the dyno. So anyway, for this particular dyno, opening the valve increases the load. So, and right now we did open the valve at this position right now, so I'm going to say yes, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, keep hands clear, and it says, in test condition, you've selected to do an axle test. To demonstrate the ramp rating, see that axle versus D cell test and max RPM, it's going to demonstrate the ramp rating we've set up. And this ramp rating is right here. And I'll get into that a little bit later, but uh, it's going to demonstrate the ramp rating. So, okay, I'm going to click on OK. And as now it's going to demonstrate. Yeah, uh, what a ramp rating of 5 counts per millisecond of 5 is. Now, you might think if you go to a higher number here, you get a faster ramp. Actually, it goes in the opposite direction. This is saying, um, for example, a number of 1 for a ramp rating, you could think of it like I'm going to do the whole ramp in one second. Ramp rating of 5 means somewhat, and this is not exact by any means, I'm going to do the whole ramp in about 5 seconds. If it was 10, I'm going to do the whole ramp in 10 seconds. That is not exact, those numbers, but it gives you a feel for what this, what this means. So now it's going to demonstrate a ramp rating of 5. And now you can hear the actuator, and it's ramping, and you can watch it and say, that seems too slow or that seems too fast. It demonstrated the ramp, and then when it got done with the ramp, it went back to manual mode. So now I have control with the knob. I'm moving the knob and it says you have control so I'm gonna say good I have control parameters set I'm gonna say keep settings and we have programmed our controller 